Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to mine Zephyr coin. So Zephyr coin has been going up in price lately and that's leading to a lot of profitability, which will show at the end of the video how profitable you can be on different CPUs. However, we're going to start off with how to actually start mining Zephyr and then we'll go into profitability of it. So the first thing you want to do is set up a wallet. So linked in the description will be the links for everything I use in this video so you can follow along with the video. So firstly, you want to click on wallet and it's going to bring up this page. So you have to actually create a wallet and it's going to give you a display that kind of looks like this. It will have three coins listed here. So Zeph, stable dollars and reserve shares. What we want to do is click on receive to get our wallet address. Remember, you have to go through the seed phrase login for this online wallet. Here we have our wallet address for Zephyr. So the next thing after getting the wallet address is to actually choose a miner. And today we're going to be using XMRig. As I said, linked in the description, this is a CPU miner, not a GPU miner. So you can download it for whichever operating system you want. Today we're going to be using this one for Windows. Once you downloaded that, you'll want to extract it and you'll actually want to open up one of these command files. It doesn't really matter which one you open right now because we can rename it. So we could just go with solo mine example. We click edit and we click more info and run anyway. So what you wanna do is basically delete all this and we're actually gonna configure it through the actual mining pool. So today, if we look on mining pool stats, these are all the pools listed for Zephyr. Today we're gonna to be using hero miners and it's gonna actually show us how to set it up and give us a pre-made batch file for that. So now we're on zephyr.herominers.com. We can click on start and it's actually going to, if we scroll down, give us a command file for the XM rig. All we have to do is copy this. So click copy, go back into that file that we deleted everything with and paste it in there. Now next, all we have to do is change the port depending on where you are in the world. So this is for Europe. I am in Europe. so. We don't actually have to change it, but here is the list of ports and you've got to use whichever one is closest to you. So this is the stratum, which would be replaced here and the port, which is up here. So 1123 or 1124, depending on nice hash or if you're starting on a different difficulty. So next, all you want to do is go back to your wallet and you want to copy this address. So you copy it, open up that file again and replace this your Zeph wallet address. We click paste in there and then you want to put your worker name. So we're just going to go with one, two, three. And then lastly, you can actually add overclocks. Now overclocking for CPUs is a bit different for GPUs. There's not as much to play around with, but today we're just going to be going with a simple threads overclock. And this is going to tell the miner how many threads to use for CPU mining. So if you don't know how many threads you have, you can actually open up a program like core temp and it's going to tell you the cores that you have and the amount of threads that you have. So the more threads you use, the higher the hash rate will be when you're mining and also the more power draw you will get. So today we're just going to go with four threads, which means that we're leaving four more left over. That's just because we can actually record while mining that way. Next, all you have to do is click exit and save. Now the last step is to actually go into XMRig and enable this XMRig to run an overclock. So to do that, you right click, you go on properties and you go on compatibility and you wanna click this box that says run this program as an administrator. And that will allow the program to actually apply overclocks when you're mining. So we set it up in this file, this solo mine example file, but you can set it up in any of these files. You can set it up in the start file, the ghost rider, the mines F, the benchmark, M1 or M10, but we're just going to rename this to 123 because that's the worker name and this is going to start mining Zephyr. So we have to double click it. We click more info and run anyway. Then we go through the security or the firewall and it's going to start running the CPU. As you can see there, ready four for four threads, huge pages and the memory there. If we open up our core temp, we can see which actual cores are being used and how many threads are being used. So we have so we have core 0, 1, 2, and 3. These are the four ones. I believe it's going to be using one thread for each core in that terms of using four threads. So that's what we're seeing here. So after it started mining, it will say miner here. It'll tell you the speed and then it'll tell you the hash per second and the max hash per second. So it'll also tell you how many shares you've got, but we can check this externally 
in the mining pool window. So all you have to do to check in the mining pool window how much you're mining is you scroll down on hero miners, you go to home, and then you paste your address from the Zephyr protocol address into here and you click lookup. It does say not found right now because we haven't submitted a share, but after you've submitted a share, it will show up here. Now, lastly, when we're talking about profitability, as you can see here, there's a lot of CPUs which are profitable for Zephyr coin at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. We have the Epics, which surprisingly do very well, the Ryzen 9s, uh, an Intel i9, Ryzen 7s, Ryzen 9s, Epics, 9s, 9s, 7s. And we get into unprofitability around, if we keep scrolling down, a lot of these CPUs are still profitable, even i5s, i3s, or i5 is where you get the unprofitable range. But some of them, even this i3 10 100, still gives profit of 9 cents, uh, or a profit of 10 cents if we see there. So basically it's made every CPU profitable to mine with right now. These are kind of Ethereum level profits of $5 on a CPU. This is from the Epic 7742, same down here. I think Ethereum level profits kind of stop at the Ryzen 9 7950X. But for the most part, we're seeing a lot of profitability from CPUs mining Zephyr coin. So hopefully you guys learned how to set up Zephyr coin and you started mining. Let me know in the comments if you have any problems and I'll try help you out with all the problems that you're having. Remember that you do have to set overclocks and you have to make sure that you run the program as an administrator to allow those overclocks to come in. And the more threads you put in, the more hash rate you're going to get. If you guys did enjoy and you managed to mine, please leave a like on the video and subscribe for more content like this.